Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Light Street Storytime. I am Miss Olivas. We are going to continue with The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. And we left off on Chapter 40, The Ship. Bright Bill was flying, it was a flying fanatic, and his favorite place to fly was up on the grassy ridge. The robot and the gosling liked to spend afternoons up there, working on the finer points of flying. And it was on such on one such afternoon that they noticed something mysterious far out at sea. Bright Bill spiraled down to his mother flopped onto the grass and pointed to the horizon. Mama, what is that thing? Roz's computer brain found the right word. That is a ship. What's a ship? A ship is a large vessel used for ocean transport. Bright Bill's face scrunched up with confusion. Used by who? I don't know. It was the first ship either of them had ever laid eyes on. From that distance, it looked as though it were moving slowly, but it was actually racing through the waves. From that distance, it looked as though it were small, but it was actually one of the largest ships ever built. The robot and the gosling watched it crawl across the ocean until it finally disappeared to the south. Where had the ship come from? Where was it going? Who was on board? Roz and Brightbill had many questions, but no answer. Chapter 41, The Summer. On clear summer days, Roz and Brightbill and Chit Chat liked going exploring. They investigated the island's sandy southern point. They marveled at the rainbows that curved up from the waterfall. They surveyed the forest and branches of tall trees. They met new friendly creatures, and sometimes they met new unfriendly creatures. But the only creatures they had to worry about were the bears. One time, they came upon a bear fishing in the river, and Roz whispered, You know what to do. Bright Bill flew, uh, flew up and away. Chit Chat scurried home through the treetops, and Roz melted into the landscape as only she could. Later, they met back at the nest and told the neighbors all about their brush with danger. On dreary summer days, they would stay inside. Roz asked Bright Bill and Chit Chat about dreaming and about flying and about eating and about all the things they could do she could, that she could not. But the youngsters had too much energy to sit still for very long. They spent one drizzly afternoon kicking acorns around the nest. Chit Chat piled them up. And then Bright Bill swung his big foot and the acorns went flying. The little friends chased the acorns as they bounced and rolled and spun across the floor. Then they made a new pile and kicked them again. Sometimes an acorn would bounce off Roz's body, clang, and everyone would laugh and giggle together. Even Roz laughed. Ha ha ha, said the robot, trying to act natural. On clear summer evenings, they would sit outside and watch fireflies twinkling around the pond. Then they lie back and gaze up at the darkening sky. That big circle is the moon, said Chit Chat, and those little lights are called stars, and one time I tried to count them all, but I can only count to ten, so I just kept counting to ten, over and over, and I have no idea how many stars there are, but I know it's more than ten. They are not stars, said Roz, some of them are planets. What's a planet? said Chit Chat. A planet is a celestial body orbiting a star. What does celestial mean? Celestial means something that is in outer space. What's outer space? Outer space is the universe outside the atmosphere of our planet. What's the universe? The universe is everything and everywhere. Oh, so the universe is our island? None of them would ever really understand the universe, including Roz. Her computer brain knew only so much. She could talk about the earth and the sun and the moon and the planets and a few stars and not much else. The night sky was full of streaking, shimmering, and blinking lights that she simply couldn't identify. Clearly, Roz was not designed to be an astronomer. On dreary summer evenings, Roz and Bright Bill would curl up together, just the two of them, and listen to the rain pattering on the roof of the nest. The robot would tell stories of annoying pine cones and terrible storms and camouflaged insects, but the sound of the rain always made Bright Bill sleepy, and he'd be out before his mother could ever finish a story. Chapter 42, The Strange Family. It was a sweltering afternoon, and the heat had put everyone in a bad mood. Roz was standing in the shade, watching her son out on the water. The other goslings were teasing him about something when they suddenly burst into laughter, and Brightbill turned and hurried home with a stormy expression on his face. He stomped into the gar garden and right past his mother without saying a word. What is wrong, Brightbill? said Roz as she followed her son into the nest. Nothing, he squawked. Leave me alone. Tell me what is wrong. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I can help. Mama, the other goslings were making fun of me. What did they say? They called you a monster and then laughed at me for having a monster mother. They should know by now that I am not a monster. Would you like me to talk to them? No, don't do that. That'll just make things worse. The robot sat next to her son. 
Mama, I know you're a robot, but I don't understand what is a robot. What a robot is. A robot is a machine. I was not born. I was built. Who built you? I don't know. I don't remember being built. My first memory is waking up on the northern shore of this island. Were you smaller back then? said the gosling. No, I have always been this size. Ross looked down at her weathered body. However, I used to be shiny, like the surface of the pond. I used to stand straighter than a tree trunk. I used to speak different, a different language. I have not grown bigger, but I have changed very much. The robot wanted to explain things to her son, but the truth was that she understood very little about herself. It was, it was a mystery how she had come to life on the rocky shore. It was a mystery why her computer brain knew certain things, but not others. She tried to answer bright bills questions but her answers only left him more confused what do you mean you're not alive squawked bright bill it is true said Roz. i am not an animal i do not eat or eat or breathe i am not alive you move and talk and think mama you're definitely alive it was impossible for such a young goose to understand technical things like computer brains and batteries and machines the goslings was much better at understanding natural things like islands and forests and parents parents the word suddenly left Bright Bill feeling uneasy. You're not my real mother, are you? There are many kinds of mothers, said the robot. Some mothers spend their whole lives caring for their young. Some lay eggs and immediately abandon them. Some care for the offspring of other mothers. I have tried to act like your mother, but no, I am not your birth mother. Do you know what happened to my birth mother? Ross told Bright Bill about that fateful day in spring, about how the rocks had fallen and only one egg had survived, about how she'd put the egg in a nest and carried it away, about how she'd watch over the egg until a tiny goslin hatched. Bright Bill listened carefully until she finished. Should I stop calling you mama, said the gosling. I will still act like your mother, no matter what you call me, said the robot. I think I'll keep calling you mama. I think I'll keep calling you son. We're a strange family, said Bright Bill with a little smile, but I kind of like it like that. Me too, said Roz. Chapter 43. The gosling takes off. It must be hard to have a robot for a mother. I think the hardest part for Bright Bill was all the mystery that surrounded Roz. Where has she come from? What was it like to be a robot? Would she always be there for him? These questions filled the gosling's mind, and his feelings for his mother swung between love and confusion and anger. I'm sure many of you know what it's like. Roz could sense that Bright Bill was struggling, and so she spent a lot of time talking with him about families and geese and robots. There are other robots on the island, said the gosling during one of their talks. He'd been sitting beside his mother in the garden, but now stood and faced her. Yes, there are others in the island, said Roz, but they are inoperative. Inoperative for a robot. Being inoperative is like being dead. Where are the dead robots? They are on the northern shore. I want to see them. I do not have an idea. Why not? You are still a goslin. You are too young to see dead robots. I will take you to see them when you are older. Mama, I'm not a gosling anymore. Brybill puffed out his chest. I'm already four months old. I'm sorry, said Ross, but you cannot go. Bill stomped around the garden and squawked. This isn't fair. I promise I will take you to see them when you are older, said the robot. But I want to go now. Please calm down. You can't even fly. I could take off and you wouldn't be able to stop me. Roz stood and her long shadow fell across her son. The gosling could feel his emotions swinging wildly. And for a moment, he was actually afraid of his own mother. Without thinking, he sprinted toward the pond, beat his wings and flew away. Chapter 44, The Runaway. Your son will be fine, said Loudwing. You know how they are at this age. I do not know, said Roz. Please tell me how they are at this age. All oh, right. Well, Brightbill is growing up fast. It's only natural for adolescent goslings to be a little moody. He just needs to be alone for a while. You've raised a wonderful son. I know he'll come home soon. Try not to worry. But Roz did worry. At least he worried as much as a robot is capable of worrying. Brightbill had never run away or flown away, and suddenly Roz was computing all the things that could go wrong. A violent storm, a broken wing, a predator. She had to find her son before something bad happened. There was only one place Bright Bill could have gone, the robot gravesite. So Roz galloped, toward, galloped northward. She leaped over rocks and ducked under branches and charged through meadows without ever slowing her pace. She raced all the way across the island until she finally stepped onto the sea cliffs above the gravesite. And there was Bright Bill perched on the edge, looking at the robot parts scattered on the shore below. His eyes were wet. Don't be angry, he said as his mother walked over. I'm not angry, but you should not have flown off. Like that. You could have gotten hurt, or worse. I was worried sick. I'm sorry, Mama. It's okay, said Roz. It is only natural for goslings your age to be a little 
moody. Mama, I need to understand what you are, and I think it might help to see those other robots. You're right, it might help. Why are you not down there? I was about to go, said Bright Bill, but I got nervous. I want you to go with me. Let us go down there, said Roz, together. And the next chapter is 45, The Dead Robots. Stay tuned. Bright Bill puffed out his chest. I'm already four months old. I'm sorry, said Ross, but you cannot go. Bill stomped around the garden and squawked. This isn't fair. I promise I will take you to see them when you are older, said the robot. But I want to go now. Please calm down. You can't even fly. I could take off and you wouldn't be able to stop me. Ross stood and her long shadow fell across her son. The gosling could feel his emotions swinging wildly, and for a moment he was actually afraid of his own mother. Without thinking, he sprinted toward the pond, beat his wings, and flew away.